Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Samantha. I play Laura Greyvale, a sorcerer from Nefalia. Hello, I'm Colin Robinson and I play Cuin de Greymont, a paladin from Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan and I play Ogvar, a ranger from Kessig. This week we would like to send a special thank you to Michael Morehouse and Bob the Badger for emailing us to say how much you were enjoying the podcast. Last week, our party had been left bewildered after an encounter with a curious carriage, and their later lunch stop was not quite a five-star experience. We rejoin them as they make their final push towards their first clue in the city of Junau. Episode 6. City Sightings. Okay, so it's 1.30 in the afternoon. You've packed up all your belongings, you've packed up your tents, you've camped down the fire... What would you like to do? We'd better go... Uh, can can I still track the hoof prints, or are we not following the hoof prints? You're more than welcome to if you want the to. hoof prints, they lead to queuing. <laughs> <laughs> are they still visible, or, or are they still going the way that we were going? Yeah, they're still going the way that you're going. Okay. So we're going to... Carry on to... Junel. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah, I suppose uh, we might as well uh, carry on to Drunel. Um, what'd you say? Uh, okay, yes, no problem. Well, I'll, I'll take the lead again. Well, I'll go in the middle, as usual. So off we go then. Okay. So we'll walk off down, um, what's the road called? The Wild Road. The Wild Road. The Wild Road, yes. Okay, and as you're going, can everyone make me a spot check, please? Uh, two plus four, so six all in. Oh, not again. <laughs> That'll be an eight all in from Alora. Six all in for Alora. Uh, so that Ogre. 20 plus one. <laughs> so you've got a six, an eight, and a nat 20. <laughs> Have we lost him? I think he's wandered off on his own, hasn't he? Okay. Um... <laughs> Take all the zeros off the 20s. <laughs> yeah. As you start walking, you walk for a good maybe three or four hours, and there's been a kind of dark, almost smudge on the horizon ahead of you for quite a while, and as you get up closer to it, you can see that it's becoming more clear, and it's actually a mountain range, small mountain range, quite a tall one, known as the Collapsing Tips. The Collapsing Tips? Yep. And you can see that it's obvious why they've got this name, because the mountain itself is full of tiny, tiny spires of rock, and you can see where some of them have collapsed on themselves and fallen down as, and, and formed scree at the bottom of the mountain. Yeah, so that's on your right-hand side inland. Do we have to pass through them, or...? No, no, the road, the road runs parallel to them. Okay, okay, cool. Well, those are some interesting mountains up there. Uh... I look a bit crumbled. Um, yeah, this is a, looks a bit weird. Mm. Oh well. Anyway, carry on walking. Okay. So it is about four thirty now, and the light is starting to drop. Okay. Uh, right. We're 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 losing the light again. Um. I, I, well, it's obviously going to be another night out in the wilds, isn't it? So, um, would you re- would you say we make camp and, uh, well, Kewin's so good at lighting fires, we'll let him deal with that. What do you say, Ogva? Okay, I'll um, I'll prepare the rabbit. Okay. Oh, that yeah. sounds don't, good. Don't forget the carrots. Oh, I've got, I've, I've got some berries. Oh, yes, yes. And an apple. I've got an apple. <laughs> apple will go with it. Well. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, where, where, where is exactly? Shall we make camp? Shall we head towards the mountains and maybe get a bit of a block? From the wind, or? Well, how far are the mountains from us now? What do you, I mean, how far do you reckon we got to walk? Mountains are about an hour and a half inland to the base of the mountains. It's quite a trek. I think they are still quite a way off, Kieran. I think it might be well past dark, and I don't think it's a good idea to be um, wandering around in the dark. I think we're better off, you know, keeping watch and staying in a group together. And I think probably we just need to just rock up and pitch up here. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I can't. Can anyone see a copse of trees again, or, or just a survival out check? Okay. 
15 plus 5, 20. Okay. That's a whole three from Alora. What's wrong with your dice? Actually, we're well working on it. No, no, I lie. It's not a three. I've got a minus one, so it's actually a one. <laughs> not a natural one, but it's just a one. I'm only four. <laughs> <laughs> All in. Okay. Thankfully, you've got Ogvar with you, and Ogvar's able to find a suitable little copse of trees for you to all to take shelter in. I'm assuming you're going to set up your tents, start a fire. You're going to prep that rabbit? Yep, yep, I'll do that. Yep, so... I'm going to chop up the carrots. Okay, are you, cho- are you using your long sword to chop up the carrots? <laughs> no, I'm using my dagger. Oh, got, which dagger? Got a nice oh, little, I've, got I've got a dagger. A silver dagger. I thought you had that nice little cheese knife. You can... <laughs> I've got that. <laughs> I've still got that. It's still in my hand. I've been no, carrying she's got, it. She's got oh, okay. Right, so yeah, you set up everything. You have uh, a nice rabbit roast, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, yes. Some carrots and carrots berries. And and some and berries and some apple. Some stuff that you apple. thought was chive. But I have saved a bit of. I have <laughs> yeah, saved you, a bit of the apple for uh, for Rowan. Yeah, you've looked at uh, the grass. Shook your head. <laughs> <laughs> Um, um, right, as I'm sat there eating my dinner, I'm going to uh, feel something moving inside my cloak, so I'm, I'm going to just open the cloak and say, you're right in there, Rowan. I think it, you know, you didn't go out last night, the weather was pretty crummy, so, um, right, so I'm just going to open my cloak, and Rowan Batkinson can go. Yep, he flies off. Uh, well, it's still going to be fairly early. Yeah. Um, oh, is the weather yeah. favourable at the moment? It is, uh, it's dropping dark. You can see that the sun is just starting to dip below the horizon and it's kind of illuminating these mountains quite nicely. And there's um, some streaks of pink and gold in the sky, but it's dropping dark very fast. Are we, uh, do you reckon we should have watch tonight or just settle down? I mean, there doesn't seem to be anybody around, but... Um. Yeah, I think we should take watch. I mean, last night it was absolutely pelking down, so nobody really bothered. Um, but I, I think maybe, you know, we're chancing our arm a bit here, being in, with things as they are in, in the world at the moment. I think we should take watch, yeah. Um, do you want me to take first watch? Oh, you can, you, uh, I suppose, so you, seeing how you're waiting for Ro, Ro, Roman Barricans, you might as well take first watch and... Um, do you want to take second, or shall I? No problem, I can do second. Yep. Okay, no um, I'll, 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 well, I'll, I'll sit and take till midnight, if you like. Yeah. Right. And then you can split the small hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he's taking first watch. Yeah, that, that'll be um, Alora. She's going to she's gonna take what, first watch, a long first watch. She's going to go from now till uh, probably midnight. Okay, so before you settle down or go to sleep, is there anything you want to discuss around the campfire, or anything else like that? Anything else you perhaps want to do, yeah. or...? Uh, you don't have to do anything. Can't think no. Oh, pebble, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we've discussed personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's got a really rough else to plan of what we're going to do when we get to Drew now. Yeah, I mean, we don't really know where it's taking us, so we can't discuss any plans for no, that. So. None of us know what to expect when we get there. Yeah. No. Uh, I don't think anything to talk about is what really happened at that the dip. Yeah. What's it? Um, right, well, well, we'll take this opportunity to have a discussion, a brief discussion about what happened back in the uh, the dip in the road with the uh, the carriage. And Yeah. Um, well, that that was a funny old lot, wasn't it? Back there with the carriage. What what, what did you make of that, Kieran? Uh, that, uh, that was seemed to be uh, well, very weird. I mean, uh, if you think about it, it, it was there. And then, it not. Was, it wasn't, yeah. And it's like, even though, you know, we found a few interesting items. I mean, Ogbo's got a ring with some runes on it, and, and you've got a knife. I have, but I couldn't work, quite work out what was going on with that. I mean, can, can I can I have another look at it? Yeah, make another appraise check. Um, you know, just have, have another look at it, turn it over my hand and examine it a bit more carefully. Um, praise check. That's an 11 all in on the appraise. Nope, still looks like a ring. You mean it still looks like a dagger? 
Oh, sorry, you say you're doing the dagger, not the ring. I haven't got He's the ring. I'm wearing, wearing the ring. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, it still looks like a dagger. Mm. Well, yeah, it's a dagger. I mean, I'm just going to slip slip it into a, a a side on my belt, like just a holder on my belt or something, and just hang on to it, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Just checking what our characters know. We know it's something to do with like another plane, the shadow. Do we know? Yeah. Do I'll we? just say you've told us, but do we? No. Would we know he, that this... It would be something that it's a commonly theorised... It's, it's a theory which scholars have come up with okay. as to what is happening. People, Some people attribute it to ghosts, some people don't believe in it at all, think it's just made up, because it doesn't happen very often at all. Um, some people say that it's, you know, you're claiming that that's happened for fame, this, that and the other. So it's a very divided opinion, but... Scholars generally tend to kind of assume that it's something to do with the shadow fell because that tends to be anything kind of wrong in this plane, things which are weird, that tends to be assumed that it's the shadow fell. Gets blamed for everything. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it is kind of the cause of everything. But... Well, I've heard, I've heard of these sorts of things happening. I mean, now and again, they're not the most common thing, but, well, the thing is, we didn't imagine it. We've actually got physical items from, from what was there. So, no matter what you believe, Perhaps these stories are true, because there's no other explanation in my in my view than this. What do you think? Oh, yes, yes. Um, undoubtedly, we, we, we saw something, but um, I was just I always thought it was just stories to scare the kids. There's no doubting. Yeah, I've I've heard it, um, but I've never actually ever witnessed it. Um, I mean, there is talk of it in uh, the church to, to do with the Shadowfell. But I've never actually witnessed it, and obviously it's true. Well, there's no denying it. Uh, You know, we've got three of us that we've all seen it, so clearly... Yes, we've each got an item from it. You had two. With the apple, and the apple tasted fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, it was definitely physical, so, yeah, I don't know. I I think we'll have to, uh, 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 if we come across it again, we'll have to um, take a bit more... Interest, because I wonder if we'd have been stood in that dip if we'd have disappeared as well. That's a very good question. Uh, wrong place, wrong time, or right place. Yes. I wonder if we'd disappeared with it, where it had gone. Yes, that's a, that's a very good point. Because um, it was physical. I, I, I think the best thing is what we did there was I, you know, one went down to try and check, and you know, only gradually come come through. Maybe maybe one person should stay out at all time, just in case. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Something to consider, I suppose. Another experience in life. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so, something to tell the grandchildren, eventually. <laughs> I do with a pack of cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not getting a deck of many things. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want that. Oh, no. Don't catch me going near deck, the deck of many things. I'm going to stop that. Right. Right, so you've had your little conversation around the campfire. It's properly dropped dark now. You can see that in the brief patches where the cloud cover is thin, you can see a plethora of stars above. And you all go to bed, I'm assuming, apart from Melora, who's on watch. Yep, I'll just sit up and I'll uh, Twitter to Rowan. Okay. See if he's still about, see if he answers me. Have a bit of a squeak at him. Right. Make me give me a ten percent. Oh, um fifteen to twenty-five. So you're on till midnight on your shift and all is quiet. You can hear kind of crickets in the grass, the soft breeze rustling. You can hear Kieran snoring inside the tent. I'm gonna assume Kieran snores. Um you overhead you can sometimes see just in the kind of faint Light from the fire just on the outside of where the light reaches. You can just see Rowan backwards and just flittering around every so often. He's hunting bugs, he's having a great time. And it's all quiet, all calm. Well, I'll just, um, I'll look at the stars and I'll think to myself, I, I can watch roughly what I know, roughly the time from the stars, being um, somebody on ships and whatnot, it would be something that I would... Make me an intelligence role for that. Oh, that's a nat 20. Yeah. Yep, okay, yeah. Y- you can tell the time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yep, so I'll just I'll just track the stars. I mean, 
as a as somebody who spends a life on the water and all hours, I would surely understand the layout of the stars yeah. and direction and, and that from that anyway. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to sit there and, and wait, and then it's going to rock up to around about midnight. Um, so I'm roughly, I can roughly tell what time um, yep. it is, and then uh, I'm going to just gently get hold of a guide rope on, on each of their tents, one at a time, not both at once, because my arms don't stretch that far, and go, uh, Kieran, Kieran, come on. My watch is over, your time to take over, I need to get some kip. Uh, Ogva, Ogva, time to get up, mate. Hmm, both getting up. Oh, <laughs> not about that. I don't know who which, but actually, I didn't know who said, who said they were taking the next watch. All right, I'll start again. Oh. No, no, you, you've annoyed him no, now. No, you, you've done it now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what, what's going on? Oh, shit, sorry, oh. mate, I forgot. It's, yeah, you weren't both getting up, were you? Oh, it's been a long day. You go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, it's gone, mate. It's gone. Oh, well, he's gone back to sleep. I, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm coming. And just for your information, there are no cow chops. Oh. I'm going to bed. Oh, capital. Oh, fantastic. Can I call Rowan back to me, or...? You can try. Okay, I'm going to give Rowan a bit of a, a whistle. What kind of check am I doing for that? Well, um, what's Rowan's listen? Well, like? Rowan's listen is... Uh, I don't know. What is Rowan's... I can't... I don't know. Oh, he's a plus eight. Roll for it. Oh, that's a 15 plus eight. Yeah, he's Rowan here. She when he he comes flittering and fluttering in, he zooms round the edge of the uh, where the light reaches, and he just flies back towards you. Right, but I'm just gonna take him onto my finger, and I'm just gonna take him into the tent with me, and just he can he can sit inside the tent. I'll just I'll put him. I've got like some guide ropes in the in the tent. He can just it's like a thing on the on the roof, the main bar on the roof of the tent. He can just hook himself onto that yeah. and hang there. Okay. Right, so you're up, Ogva. Okay, yeah. So uh, is there anything you'd like to do, or...? Uh, keep the fire going, really. Yeah. Keep the fire going overnight. Um, so have a little think and contemplate on my uh, poor accuracy earlier in the day. <laughs> yeah, pick me a 10%. Um, we go for 50 to 60, please. Okay, so you think about your... Uh, miss on the deer earlier you stew on that a bit but it's quiet night once again there's nothing you can hear uh, you can hear Kieran's snores and you can hear like a very light wheezing which you'd assume is the bat sleeping apart from that nothing really happens okay so uh, what time is it? I took over at midnight didn't I yeah what time are you planning to go on to um, I'll go on to about 3 o'clock in the morning do 3 hours okay yeah, you took over at midnight, so you're doing three hours, so, yeah, time passes fairly quickly, it's, you know, about two hours in, and is there anything else you'd like to do, or? Not really, just try and keep quiet, make sure everyone has a good night's sleep. Okay, so your, your three-hour shift passes without any kind of alarm or anything, so. So I'll, uh, I'll go over now to Kewin's tent and give him a bit of a, a tap on the uh, on the side. Uh, Kewin, wake up, wake up. Is that you, Agua? Yes, it's uh, it's time for your your watch now. Uh, okay, I'll uh, yes, I'm coming out now. Uh, yes, I'm gonna okay. come out, and Agua's gonna go in. Yep. Yep. Right. Uh, okay, and I'm just gonna sit by the fire, but back to the fire, so it doesn't destroy my eyesight. Okay. <laughs> Oh, looking into a fire at night is just the worst thing you can do, isn't it? Okay, 10%. Uh, 85 to 95. Okay. Your shift passes without any interruption. It's quiet. It's been quiet night. And it's about 6 o'clock in the morning now, and you've kept the fire going. Are we all waking up? Have I replenished any health? During yes, the you night? have. So you've had a long rest, so are you below half hit points? No. No? Okay, no. then you heal fully. Okay, brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> that giant deer. Yeah, right in the spuds. 
Yeah, we needed spuds to go with dinner, but I wasn't quite got that in mind. Right, so we'll get up. Um, I know we had something fairly decent to eat the night before, but that was all, like half past four, wasn't it? So would we eat the other half a day ration for breakfast? You've still got some venison left over. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah, oh yeah. I was just going to say, I'll have some of that venison, I'll have some of that cold meat for breakfast. I'm good with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're having cold meat? Yeah. 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 So that's the that. last of your venison eaten. And that's, that's, so that's the rabbit, the venison, the carrots, the apple, and the berries gone. Yes. And the chive. And the, yes, and the chive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, yeah. So. Right, but I, I reckon we hit the road again. Um, we've got a bit of a, still got a bit of a trek ahead, haven't we? Day, day and a half? It's about a day and a half for trek, maybe day and a quarter's trek ahead. Let's, let's push on with this one, because the less time we're out in the open, the better. Yes, that's not, that, 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 that sounds fine to me. I'll, uh, once again, I'll, I'll, I'll go forth and I'll go first. Uh, and I'll, I'll go, you're going to bring up the, uh, the rear? Yes, no problem. I, although I wasn't very successful yesterday, I think we should hunt if we have the chance. Yep, yep, yep. No problem. No, 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 no. I seem to do all, all right. That, that, that benefit, venison was quite nice. Swing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. So you start off down the road. Do you want to try and hunt while you're on the road? Yeah, at some point during the day, yeah. Yeah, okay, Just sort of so... keep an eye out. If we see something, we'll have a go. If you roll me a spot check. That is going to be an eight all in. Okay. Yeah, you're keeping an eye out, but you can't really see much. There's some hawks circling overhead, and you notice one of them stoops down into a dive, and it seems to have something in its uh, talons. And you can assume it's probably got, caught a rabbit or something similar, but you've got no luck seeing anything yourself. Okay. Okay, so keep on walking. Yeah. Yeah. Are we still sort of walking through the same terrain, sort of rolling? Yeah, plain? it's all the same terrain. The only difference is now that you've got these uh, mountains you can yeah. see on your right-hand side, and they're kind of looming overhead now, because you're kind of walking right down parallel to them. You're in the middle of the mountain range almost at this point. Okay. And you can see it's, uh, it is looming quite high now. Okay. Okay. Um, would everyone like to make me a spot check then, please? I'm 13 all in. 15 all in. I'm 8 all in, and I'm really done with all my dice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can all see, even though you've got quite a low spot check, you all see that as you're walking along, on your left-hand side, you've got this absolutely this panoramic sea view. The sky has cleared up over the last hour, and you've got some faint sunlight coming through. But you've got this abs- this this panoramic sea view, and the sea is a steely blue, and it's almost you get this sense of how cold it is just from looking at it. And the further you look out towards the sea, the less you can see. It's these big billowing, thick, obscuring fogs which lie heavy over the waters of Nefalia. They are they are in form today, and they are you know you can't see much further out. Um, interrupting your view of the sea, you can just about make out uh, the uppermost structure of what you can imagine to be a large gothic style manor house, so you can see this spire and almost like the apex of this roof and it, it looks large but it's you can tell it's far away. Okay, is that between us and the sea? Yes, that's yeah. between you and the sea, it's almost like where the land is going out and you've got this view of the sea, it's almost like it dips down before going out towards the coast Okay. and it's just in that dip there. The Mountains, as you've come up closer to them, your path is slightly veering towards the mountains even more. And as you've got closer and closer, you can see that the mountains appear to be made of layers of craggy, sedimentary rock. You can see varying layers of shades of grey. And as this sun's clearing up, the sky's clearing up, and you get this glimpse of sun through, you, the, the mountain actually becomes illuminated almost. The and you can see thin layers between the rock, the layers of rock, which are just shining a brilliant silver. Can you roll me a knowledge check okay. from, from Ogvar, a knowledge local... What sort of knowledge? From Elora, just a straight knowledge check. Okay. And then a knowledge religion from Kewin, please. Mm. Ten all in from Elora. Yeah, I've got an eight, but I do a, I'll be looking at the rocks at the moment. Yes. With my geography knowledge. Yeah, you can roll geography, yep. Yeah, 17 so, all in. 
So I'd be 10 all in. Okay, so for the for Elora, as you're looking at these rocks, you know that the name, you know, obviously, know this is called the collapsing tip, and you know all these kind of you can see that there's obviously different sedimentary layers, this, that, and the other. But being from Nefalia, you are also aware that there is a a form of mining operation which operate which works from the collapsing tips. And they work closer to Junau, so they've got a clear point of trade routes and you know, work supply, workforce. And this this mountain range here actually forms the backbone of Junau's trade. The mining company itself is called um the Junau Mining Company. Original. Yeah, well, you know, you've got to have your branding there. And, yeah, they usually use labour from the city to mine silver and ore from the mountains, transport it back to the city, and then transport it out on the ships. And you yourself have actually escorted a cargo, um, a, a cargo full of this metal and ore once before, which is how you know about it. With a geography check, at 10 you can tell that these mountains are old and you're actually aware that the silver brilliant silver layers are actually pure silver this is something which is quite common in Innistrad because most of the silver is believed to originate from the moon okay. so that you get a lot of rocks which have got silvering on them they've got silver cores inside them it's silver is something which is just commonplace in the, in um, in Strad, which is why most weapons are made of silver because it's cheap to do okay okay with a knowledge religion of 17 you know from your studies in the church that the silver mined here is believed to be the same silver that forms the moon's surface and the hell vault you know this is a fact it's not just uh, all oh, people believe this it is you know that the silver is the exact same and you're also aware of it's not a common it's not commonly known but maybe you've read an obscure book and you've caught something about it but there's an old children's tale which is taught to the children's children of the church and it in this tale it says that on the tallest peak of this of the collapsing tips there is a link to the moon itself threads of pure silver and it's said that if you spend time and travel up there you'll receive Avison's blessing well, so we've got to decide whether we a go for the blessing or b we've got the cows or Drunel or Drunel we've still got five and a half days uh, rations and we're only a day and a half away it's true do we share this information with each other it's up to you um, <clears throat> Depends if we're going for the tip. Well, or the well, the collapsing tips. Um, I know a little bit about those, being from around this kind of area. Um, so, I'm going to share the information that I know with everybody else. Okay. Um, talk about that as we're walking. Yes. Um, does anybody else know anything about that? No, 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 there's an old uh, nursery rhyme stroke tale uh, that, that if you, you, you manage to get to the top of uh, the uh, uh, collapsing tip, um, you get a blessing. Oh. Because it's uh, uh, pure silver, like uh, the moon. Okay, I'd not heard that one. But then I've not spent much time around the church, to be fair. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something we're taught, you know, in, 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 early on in, in church. But, you know, whether it's true, I, I, you know, obviously I've never been to the top, so I've never ne been near to the mail, so... What do you think of that? Uh, I, I don't know much about uh, this area, but um, like it's clear that a lot of silver in those mountains, you can see... Can we see the mining excavation or not? No, you can't actually see the mining company itself. No. It's closer to Janao. You're kind of halfway through oh, the mountain range okay. at this point. Well, you, can see, you can see the veins of silver from here in the oh. sunlight. Oh, yes. 
So I suppose. Well, we can either A, have a go at climbing to the top, maybe, or, or we can have a look at the. Uh, that gothic spire. See what see see, see what goes on there. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that building is. Um, I mean, obviously, all that I know from being around this area is that obviously, yes, the, there's silver in those mountains, and yeah, we all know the fables and the, the tales. Um, I didn't know that about the church. Um, that, that that was what was taught, or, or or that there was supposed to be like a blessing at the top. But what I do know is that. Um, from being on the ships and and Casper moving cargo on his ships, he we have taken at least one um, shipment of uh, silver ore, which is mined from those particular mountains. So there is a mining operation that that, that forms part of the backbone of of Drenau. So obviously it's it, it's moved from the mountains to Drenau and then it's loaded onto ships and moved around. But that's all I know about those. Uh, doesn't kind of help us on our quest, but it's a little bit of background information for everybody. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know what that. Yeah, clearly there's a residence there of some description. It looks looks quite large from here. I, I mean, it's quite a way away, and you can see it. So I'm guessing that it's not a small place. And I don't know what it is. Well, if, if we went that way, then uh, we we pick up the path into Drunel. Well, at I think the very we, least. Well, we've got to head that direction anyway, so I'm thinking maybe, uh, maybe we we head and just you know at least pass by the place and see what the place is. Nothing wrong with being nosy. What do, what do you think, Kieran? Yeah, that's 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 fine with me. Uh, um, I mean, don't want to trespass on on some somebody's uh, mining rights. Well, I don't know whether the that that house has got anything to do with the mining, but uh, you know, well, it, it could do. It might not do. I don't know. It's just a, just a residence, but there's not exactly many residences around here, is there? So, at, at the moment, this this manor house, it isn't ahead of you. It isn't on your path. It's right. to your left. More. It will be a bit of a bit. It'd be a bit of a detour. I mean, the path here goes directly to Drenau, and it's a little bit of a. And off the beaten track, it would be a bit of a round robin trip to go out to have a look at it. But it looks like quite a big place. I mean, have we got? Do we really want to? You know, as the only residents we've seen, but we are on the path to Drenau. So, do we want to go straight down to Drenau, or do you want to do a detour? Is there a point in doing a detour? Are we going there for a reason? No, no, no. no I'm just, just. Um, curiosity. Well, the thing is, we 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 were set out to to go to Drenau. I think we best if we go off the beaten track. That's another another journey. It might mean another night out from, you know, out in the wilds. I'm not sure that. I'm thinking that maybe we just need to get to our destination and have a look. I mean, you know, go to Drenau. That's fine with me. I mean, um, we're not going to make it in a day anyway. So we're going to have one more night to, uh, out. Because it's uh, it's about day and a quarter, day and a half. Yeah, about that much. Um, so I suppose we could get closer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we just carry yeah, on walking. Carry on on the path to now. That's where we set out to go to. So I think. Okay. So about two o'clock, you, you're kind of at the end of this mountain range now. Mm-hmm. You're kind of parallel with the end of this mountain range and. You can see, you, you can also hear that there are some faint clanging sounds. You could assume this is the mining operation running over on the end there. And as as you're drawing closer towards Janelle, you kind of hit this rise which gives you this view down, running down the lay of the land to where Janelle lies on the coast. And the dark, this dark mass ahead of you it begins to resolve itself into an actual city. The road you're on has been steadily deviating towards the coast and you're kind of approaching it now from a northwest direction. As time's passed, you've begun to travel downhill. Okay, yep. So where you are, you were travelling yeah. kind of suddenly there, but now you're approaching from a northwest kind of like okay, that. Yep, yep. no problem. And you can tell that by the time you've been so you've been travelling downhill steadily, and by the time you reach the gate, you can tell that you'll be just above sea level 
you, as you approach, you begin to get a better view of the city's design. And the most prominent thing which you can see is that slap bang in the middle of the city is this large promontory. It's this large outcropping of rock and it is absolutely massive. And that it has actually been built on. Beyond that, there's not much else you can discern. Uh, it's surrounded by high walls, not as high as the walls surrounding Swalbon. You would know that, Kewin. So we're talking like a, a fully walled city. It with is a, a fully a, a walled big old city rock in the middle. with yeah, a big lump of rock in the middle. Okay. Is anything built on the rock or? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, you can you can't you can't really make out exactly what, but you can see it looks like there's been structures built on top of the rock. Okay. And that's all you can see from this. Uh, this kind of place you are now. That's all you can make out. So we're still a little, quite a long way out. You're about half a day's walk out now. Okay. And it's only about two o'clock. Two p.m. Yeah. Okay. So really, we could push on and make it. The last half bit. day. Well, we'd be, be eight p.m. It gets clock dark at seven, so we'd be doing the last hour in the dark. I think it'd be Is worth it? pushing through. Yeah. Does um. <laughs> Do civilizations all just start at the city gates, or are there, are there like outcrops of like farms or mills no, or anything? Um, no, as you as you had stood on this this overhang, almost this, so you've got this view down onto the city, where the city is. You can actually see that there looks like there's farmed fields, maybe outside of Junau, kind of in front of the northern gates of Junau, and. You know, there's there's enough fields there to supply a city, you'd imagine. Okay. Um, so as it's dropping dark, we'd probably be good travelling through. Yeah, you'd land. probably be travelling through paths and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be safe-ish so to travel. Well, my suggestion would be, um, why don't we just grab some rations and just munch as we walk and like, let's push on because you know we can see it from here. It's, it feels like touching distance, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, as, you know, as you've pointed out, oh, well. Ogba hasn't pointed out. He hasn't pointed out the farms. No, but you can all see it. Can do. Oh, can do. oh right. So as 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 we can see from here, obviously there's uh, the, the city's walled as all these cities are because of um, you know protection and everything. But there are farms outside of the city. So um, let, let's just let's just push on. I'm going to grab some rations and munch as I walk. What do, what do you reckon, guys? Yeah, that, 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 that's 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 fine. That's fine with me. I mean, it does look. Fairly substantial, uh, uh, walled city. Not obviously as big as you know the capital, but uh, well, I know it's one of the main cities. You know, yeah, it's one of so the big ones. I, yes, no, I, I reckon we should go for it. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is we'll do the last hour with, with our lamps. Fine, I reckon we go for it. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, no worries. So I'm gonna knock off. Um, I'm going to knock off half a ration because I'm busy walking and everything. So um, uh, We have had yeah. Brecky. <laughs> Hope, hopefully we'll be able to find... Uh, we're going to get there sort of 8 o'clock-ish. Um, yeah, if you're moving right, it a decent... All going well. If you're moving it a decent clip, then yeah, yeah 8 o'clock would be a reasonable. So we might be able to get some food in, a, in when we get there. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I'll take half a day. So we haven't had anything since breakfast at this point, have we? Mm. No. no. I'll take half a ration and push on. Yep. Pick okay. up the pace. Would you like to make me another spot check, Ogvar? Okay. <laughs> another nat 20. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's going to start reversing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nat one's a winner now. <laughs> okay, as, you're, as you start walking off, you've got ration in hand almost. You're kind of munching, mind your own business. But as you go to walk off, you spot, just out of the corner of your eye, about 40 foot away, sat down, you haven't noticed it until now because it's been fairly well camouflaged, a mountain goat. Nice. And he's he's at the back, <laughs> so we've walked past it, <laughs> effectively. Well, it's, it's not in front of you, it's 40 foot that away. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, he can see it to the one side. Yeah. Well, he's, he's, um, we're, we're too busy munching him. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we're 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 chulling along the uh, track here, me and Kieran. And okay. Um, I'm not really going to say anything to anyone because I don't want to startle it, but um, I'm feeling a bit confident about myself. I'm thinking I'm going to take my bow and I'm going to 
just sort of like, do a, little, like, a whistle, like, to her. The I was like, put my hand up, point yeah. over. Not to startle. And okay, roll me a performance check for that. <laughs> a performance? I thought we yeah. be walking off. <laughs> What's uh, performance? Should be a couple down from the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just just a straight performance will do. Okay, yeah. And, uh, minus one. Yeah, that's a three, all in. <laughs> Yeah, they, they turn around, they look at you, and you just seem to be in the macaroni, to be honest. <laughs> you, you know, you, you're kind of whistling, and you're like, Ugh, but they, they just don't I'm get look it. I'm and, and kind of like stick my head on one side, pull a face, shake my head, and just say to him, motion with my hand, carry on walking, carry on walking. So we carry on. We okay. just carry on. Well, it's just me and the goat, then. <laughs> it's you and the goat. Yeah, so um, I'm assuming the goat hasn't done much. Okay, I'm going to... Take a shot. What's the range on your bow? Ah, that's a very good point. It is 60 foot. Yeah, you'll be fine with that. Uh, okay, so roll to hit. Okay. It's an 8 plus 4, 12, all in. Yeah, your arrow flies through and it hits the goat. And it hits it in the shoulder, it runs forward a bit, bleats, goes stiff and falls over. Cool. And we're still walking. Yeah, I'd imagine both of you want me a listen check. 13, all in. Nope, that's a five all in. Okay, yeah, you're Kieran, you, you turn around as you hear this kind of bleat and you see him, he's shot this goat. So has he just stopped dead in the path? You, well, I'd assume so, unless he's walking with his head turned around like an owl. Well, seeing as I don't hear anything, I'm just going to walk straight into the back of him. What, what, what was that? Oh! <laughs> Hello! Oh, what'd you stop for? Didn't you hear that? Hear what? So, so, sort of like a bleating. How bleating. far away are they from me at the moment? <laughs> They're probably about 15 foot away. They haven't gone far. <laughs> so I just sort of like just point at the goat. <laughs> oh, did you hear anything? Yeah, I just sort of point at the dead goat. And... I'm going to turn around and look at oh, this point. I've got go. one. Oh, well done, Mogwai. What am I looking at? What, what are we looking at? So I'm just going to sort of wander off and sort of just grab hold of the goat by its horn and drag it back to the road and look. Oh. Point at it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a goat. Well, it was a goat. It's a dead goat. It's still a goat. What are you going to do with that? Eat it. <laughs> right, okay, let's get on. Let's move okay. on down this. We're never going to get there if we carry on like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't me that shot it, it was him. <laughs> well, well done, Ogva. Right, let's go. On my shoulder, off we go. All right, okay, so you make steady, you make good progress at this point because you're really getting a clip on trying to get to the city before it falls dark, I suppose, or just after it falls dark. Um, okay. And as you walk along, it's a quiet walk. You drop down and you travel down towards the coast. You've got this goat on your shoulders. I'm assuming you've uh, yanked your arrow out of it at this point. Okay, yeah, no problem. But yeah, time goes on and it's a, uh, you know, you're moving, you're moving quite quickly. The paladin's clanking along, so you'd assume you'd have been attacked by now if there was anything out there to attack you. But you get down and it's just drop dark when you first hit the first field and. You can see that these fields are their rough, kind of more root vegetables than anything else. Uh, this isn't particularly fertile soil, you can imagine. But you start walking past all these fields, and you occasionally see a rough farmhouse almost. How dark is it? It's twilight. It's about five o'clock. Uh, you have made good progress, okay. aided by the downhill kind of slope. And these, these farmhouses, you can see they're you know, kind of roughly thrown together. There's you can see pinpricks of light from windows and cracks in the in the building itself. And there are loads of these just kind of scattered all over the place. They aren't they aren't packed closely together, but you know, as a farm would be, you've got a couple of fields and a small holding and then some more fields and another small holding. Right, I'm gonna get this dagger off my um off my side, this one that I've picked up. Yeah. Um and I'm just gonna cast light onto it. Um yeah. so that I can at least we can see, because um, the light gives us... What radius does it give It's light? 30 foot of good light, 60 so foot, and then just and light it up foot of half light. Because I'm in the middle, it will just kind of illuminate a pool around us, certainly. Okay, okay so Elora lights up a dagger, and you've got decent light, and you keep on going, I suppose? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Head for the gates. Okay. So it doesn't take long, it's about... Six o'clock, actually, just past dark when you reach the gates. Roll me a spot check, everyone, please. Spot check. 
And that'll be a 14 from Alora. That'll be a 16 from me. And from Ogbar okay. 2, 16. Okay. So, as you approach the northern gate, you get your first glimpse inside of Janelle. Dead ahead, I mean, you look at first, the first thing you see really is the gate itself and the walls. And there are these massive stone walls. You could say they're about 30, 35 foot high. There are guards patrolling along the top of them every now and then, and there's a couple of large, um, almost like watchtower spires on top of each corner as the wall bends away, where you can imagine that guards stand inside, they have a rest, they take shelter from the rain. But these gates in front of you, they're, they're still open at this time. They haven't been shut yet. You can imagine they're probably not shut very often due to their size. But they are massive oak gates with iron reinforcement behind them. And you can see a, an immense kind of drop bolt on the back of the one gate almost and you can imagine it would take quite a number of people to actually move it but looking inside the city dead ahead is what appears to be a largish garrison from what you can see it appears to be laid out in a courtyard formation this is you are kind of at the entrance now stood in the entrance way the gateway into the city and there is a massive archway opening into this garrison almost large enough for two people to pass by while mounted to the right there is a wooden staircase you can just see leading up onto a balcony underneath the balcony there are tables and seating and you can hear and you can see that there's a load of soldiers kind of sat there like they're off shift they're drinking they're making merry they're making noise there's the occasional whinny and snort of a horse stamp of the feet so you can imagine there's a stables in there too and you can see some archers on the left doing some late night target practice and it's just all these clanging whinnying thunking sounds the sound of a tankard smacking onto a table they all kind of add to the general clamour and din of you now to the left of the northern gate where you stood you get this impression of there's a highly industrial area for what you can see there's very little in the way of colour it's grey and it's bland and it's dirty with soot solid stone buildings you can imagine that if they've got a lot of fire going around here they're probably not going to have wooden buildings probably learned that the hard way and even though it's late at night this this city is still alive it is teeming with activity you can hear them oh, it's six o'clock it's, it's past dark it's not particularly late at night but it is dark and um, you can hear the ringing of sounds of hammer on metal sword on sword and you can assume that this place produces a lot of metal work. This is kind of like the more industrial sector. On the right side, there is a large wall. I say large, it's about six foot tall and it curves around to the right out of sight. Above the level of this wall, you can see buildings with multi story buildings and they're noticeably more luxurious than the buildings in your immediate surroundings. Back to what's directly in front of you. Past the garrison to your right, you can see several well-kept, affluent-looking shops. And these shops are still open. These shops, you can imagine, they wouldn't shut till very late. Mm -hmm. And on the left, there are several shops which appear to be selling swords, armour, more practical stuff for those who require defensive and offensive weapons and shields. The most prominent feature which catches your attention, though, is this large, towering chunk of rock slap bang in the centre of the city and now that you're closer to it this whole city is illuminated by burning braziers and torches and lamps and everything but now that you're closer you can see that it rises steeply and it has two plateau type levels and you can see on the lower level on the lower plateau you can clearly see the symbol of Avacyn and there is a church on this level and a short circular tower on the top level, um, there are multiple official looking buildings and there is one slap bang in the centre which you can imagine overlooks the sea on the opposite side of the city and it is an absolutely massive mansion and it just kind of screams almost old money, it looks lavish, even in, you know, lamp lit, it looks very well kept. and. You know, you can almost see this, this this mansion's got history to it. Okay. And that is what you see in front of you.
soaked in the scenery, surroundings and lie of the land. The silver mines and mystery mansion briefly drew Kieran's curiosity, but they pressed on as planned. Ogvar made up for his earlier poor performance and proudly gathered a goat, which he now carries as they reach the city gates. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.